Hey everybody, welcome back to Candlelight Stroll. We profiled paranormal hotspots in the tri-state area. And today, we are going to talk about and wrap up our look at Dogtown. And we're just going to talk about the town itself and all the paranormal activity that happens when you just drive through the town. And as always, we are your hosts, Marcus D. And Vic Whaley. I want you all to strap in and get ready because Marcus is about to uh, drop the history on you. And it's, it's a pretty bumpy road right there. Okay, so the town of Dogtown was settled in about 1806, and it was organized in a Union Township, but it is now in 1819. Now, the reason why people went there in the first place was because, because of its peninsula shape, it made it really good to grow crops there. What I don't know if they didn't understand, didn't care, was that because of how close it is to the river and it is a giant floodplain and floods so easily. In 1937 a massive flood comes through the area destroying so many homes, the bridge, and these buildings that are there that a lot of the damage can still be seen today. And which is why it has this Texas Chainsaw Massacre look to it while you're driving through the place. And with how the town was set up which is all these different family farms, it creates all these different family cemeteries that are out there, which makes a place of like, that has a population of 300, have like over like nine or 10 cemeteries that you can find driving around out there. And I don't know if it's relevant, maybe it's just the conspiracy theorist in me, but like several of the, the very famous figures that many of the the roads are named after all of them were in these these secret societies everything from the Freemasons to the Odd Fellows Ancient Order of United Workmen the Grand Army of the Republic I don't know if it's connected to the paranormal activity I just found it strange and all through the history of Dogtown it's rarely renovated to improve the quality of life of the people that live down there the roads are never really worked on. There's never a, there's not a flood wall that's built down there to keep the water from rushing in. So the people that live down there all through the history go through these cycles of being flooded out of their homes. And we don't know why. I've often responded to Marcus when we're down there, uh, particularly around flood time, is how do these people get out of their homes, out of the peninsula and get to their jobs? I'm just really not sure how I'd do it. It has to be rough on them. But as far as the lore on Dogtown, and we've experienced a few of these things, there's a lot of odd stuff that happens there that's not necessarily tied to a specific place. One of the most notable ones is electronic anomalies. When you're traveling around down there, you'll often find that in sudden spikes, you'll have problems with your electronics. Uh, similar to electronic drain phenomena, you're batteries will just suddenly start to go out even if they're fresh. Lights will start to flicker on and on, or on and off. The bulbs will give out abnormally fast and the most uh, hard to deal with one is uh, your cars will just die, even if you take different cars. The most notable place for the uh, car batteries to just suddenly die out is around the turnabouts. Uh, as you drive through Dogtown, there's not very many roads to pull off, so there's a few areas where you can pull just slightly uh, off the road and you actually have a legitimate turnabout there. I, I can't tell you how many times that we pulled into one of those to turn around and head back the other way or just to get out of Dogtown and suddenly, boom, the car goes out. And I'm not talking about we stopped the car, the car won't restart. It's just the car goes from running to off. I've seen this happen in a lot of different cars and a lot of different times. And it makes the whole place very difficult. I'm not sure what to say about a possible cause for it, but I've experienced and I know several other people that have as well. Another peculiar thing about Dogtown is these gravestones that you can find out there. While me and Vic were driving out in Dogtown, we, we came to the spot where there were three trees, sort of in a circle. And in between these three trees, there were chunks of, of gravestones just, just sitting there. And we just we just thought it was it was very peculiar as we're driving around out there. Some people have reported while exploring Dogtown that when you get near uh, some of the cemeteries or 
the crumbling, dilapidated gravestones that seem to be scattered around the area, that you suddenly hear the sounds of uh, rattling chains that have no natural source. Other people have reported when being around them, sudden formations of apparitions appearing and then disappearing. Nothing that carries any specific common theme, just humanoid apparitions. Some people also have reported encounters with bargeists within the area. For those of you who are unfamiliar with bargeists, which is a special interest of mine, they're dark spectral uh, hounds, almost uh, describable as a shadow person equivalency of a uh, large dog that will often uh, chase people out of an area. Some people say that they're an extremely ill omen that seeing them multiple times is an omen of certain death. For those of you paranormal investigators that prefer the safety of your car, don't worry, we got another one for you too. While driving through Dogtown, sometimes you'll experience, we call them spatial anomalies, where you're driving and you think you should have reached a certain point by now, but you haven't. You just keep going and going and going. Sort of gives it this road to nowhere sort of feel. There's even been more extreme spatial anomalies reported with one group of paranormal investigators going out to uh, check out a location around Dogtown. They know for a fact that uh, when they're exploring the area that there is a uh, white house across the street from it. They had explored for a while, left, came back to the exact same area. While exploring around, they didn't find any new information to advance the investigation they're currently on. But one of the things that perplexed them greatly is that white house was gone. They drove around, thinking they may have been, somehow ended up in the wrong place, but there was no other similar locations in the area at all. They returned to the previous place and even found their footsteps from uh, the previous night and other signs of their investigation. They even said that when they got in the car, they could see the uh, house, particularly in the uh, rearview mirror when they left. But when they returned, the house just wasn't there. Some people will also talk about when they go out there, uh, They'll see large fires out in the crops or down by the river and say that there's a look of some sort of uh, bizarre ceremony or ritual going on. I've never encountered one of these, but I have a pretty good guess on what's actually going on. Uh, I grew up in the country, and it's not uncommon in the uh, rural areas for teenagers to get together, start a large bonfire, drink a few non-age appropriate drinks, and get a little wild out there. And I think that's what's being reported on that one. But a much more interesting one is uh, the reports of the black mist. Some investigators have gone down there and even at night uh, report that there's a thick visible black mist that'll sometimes settle over the area. I've personally never encountered it and I've not ran into anyone who uh, says that, but I have heard reports, particularly online and uh, rumors from someone who knew someone else who had reported to see it. I look forward to the day where I run into it, but I've never heard of anyone ever uh, trying to venture into the black mist and figuring out what's going on. At least no one who ever returned to tell the tale about it. So Marcus, what's your thoughts on the strange uh, goings on around Dogtown? You know, Vic, when we did our show on the Shadow People, we, we talked a lot about them being drawn to, to people uh, based on, on native experiences or, or, or toxic environments. And when you you look at the Ohio River and all of the toxins that get dumped from all of these different power plants that are out there, you look at, I mean, there was a video where we had like meth syringes just floating in the Ohio River. And, and this is a place that is constantly, we bring it up, and I mean constantly submerged underwater. So this whole place is constantly covered in toxic water. I don't see how that couldn't draw negativity to a place. I mean, what are your thoughts? As far as a good solid answer on the subject, I've got some theories mulling around in my head, but nothing really definitive, nothing I can really back up. The place runs such a bizarre gambit of uh, different aspects of strangeness, it's hard to really contribute it to any singular source. But the one thing I will say, it, it possesses that perfect mix 
of isolated and populated. It's kind of the ultimate area for strange things to occur. There's enough people there that you know that there are people around. There's enough people there for stores to get out of there. But it's isolated enough that when you go down there, it feels almost as if you're driving around a ghost town in some areas. I definitely understand that sensation you were talking about earlier about uh, the continuing road, that road to nowhere. In many ways, the place when you go down there, particularly at night, feels that way. It seems like a, a likely area to have a uh, encounter with an entity or to see something that would be abnormal. And if you've been following this video series, you know about as much as we do about Dogtown now at this point. We hope you liked the video. If you liked it that much, please share it to get this information out to others. As always, subscribe if you want to hear more great videos on different paranormal hotspots in the tri-state area. Because next week, we're going to take a look at Pilot Knob Cemetery in Marion, Kentucky. A great paranormal hotspot out there for paranormal investigators. And as always, keep believing. Because we'll keep listening.